Well, hi everyone. I did a video recently on the Westbound Washington Bridge demolition in Rhode Island, and uh, I used some audio segments from WPRO programs uh, with Tara Granahan and Gene Valicente, and the statements made by RIDOT Director Peter Alviti, a lot of them didn't set right with me in terms of uh, making any sense or struck me as, as wholly inaccurate. And one of the ideas was kind of bounce around in my head and I realized what it is. So I, I, I see a concern relative to the demolition of the westbound bridge and possible impacts to the eastbound bridge. So let's play these video clips of the demolition that occurred last weekend. Oh my. Well, that didn't go according to the plan that I received from an insider who's familiar with the project. You can see they had a very specific demo sequence and they had these cushions built up on crane mats which rested on these barges and there was no such cushion present from the videos that you could see during that demolition. So I wanna play a couple of segments. This first one's from uh, Tara's program. It did create a rather startling kind of uh, noise when it came down and visually it's impactful but I'm sure you've seen pictures of bridges being demolished or buildings being demolished in the middle of cities where they come tumbling down in a, in a crash um, if it's planned and it's executed according to a plan then and it's done safely and in this case all of those things it was done safely uh, personnel were positioned exactly where they were supposed to be away from the um, for the demolition during the time of that being for dropping down and, uh, and the nearest proximity to the existing bridge was about 150 feet away to the closest part of this falling beam. Um, so the existing bridge was in no way, in any way, shape or form ever put into any kind of danger. Okay, so he talks about the distance being about 150 feet away. That's inaccurate and I'll show you why here in a minute. Uh, contractor placed timbers according to the demolition plan and some uh, blasting cushions on the, on the surface to kind of deaden or soften the impact of the falling debris on them. Well, and there were no blasting cushions to be seen there in those video clips. Above the surface of the barge they placed prior to the demolition timbers and beams um, that reinforced the deck surfaces to withstand in and he repeated this on another show well, again all in accordance with the um, approved demolition plans it it is a messy business uh, you know they don't fall gently when you've got several hundred tons of concrete coming down it does not fall gently but that's part of demolition it was expected all right, well, he acknowledges that these pieces of reinforced concrete weighing several hundred tons did not fall gently. Okay, well, as I pointed out in a previous video, he mentioned a number of times that everything was done according to plan, and uh, it clearly wasn't. If anybody just has a casual familiarity with construction activity and looks at that demolition sequence, there's clearly a mismatch. Okay. Uh, there's also some chatter about, uh, you know, putting the adjacent... Uh, eastbound uh, Washington Bridge that we're currently using for to, to divert traffic over that uh, may have put that in jeopardy. In fact, this demolition at the closest proximity, uh, this demolition was to that, it was about 150 feet, uh, and at the other end, about 250 feet away from that bridge. So it was not even close. There was no issue with regard to any kinds of um, uh, issues placing the existing structure in any kind of a jeopardy. So that's what struck me as I thought about it more. He's saying that there was no potential damage or impacts to the eastbound Washington Bridge because, hey, the demolition activity was 150 feet away. And as I mentioned previously in another video, 
most of the clients that I work with, uh, DOTs and private uh, entities like railroads, they often have concerns about vibrations induced by construction activity having a negative impact on nearby structures, whether they're utilities, rail lines, adjacent buildings, or adjacent bridges. And in those specifications for those projects, there's two key requirements that I typically see. And one is to come up with a vibration monitoring plan. And that is to look at what's in the area, look at the construction activity that you're engaged in, and determine what the safe, quote unquote, vibration limits would be. And those vary, they're based on uh, frequency as well as peak particle velocity. And I had to do this on a railroad project. This is a typical plot. We have a seismograph uh, made by Instatel, and it records the vibration levels that occur. And we see most of these are under 30 hertz, which tends to be the most damaging and the type of vibrations that are generated at a construction site, particularly during demolition. And what we see is peak particle velocities as low as uh, 0.15 inches per second max that's allowed. On this job, we are allowed up to an inch per second, uh, this job being the railroad job. So it isn't clear to me whether RIDOTS actually had a vibration study done and specified vibration limits and is in fact monitoring the vibrations at the eastbound Washington Bridge. Because that would have been the simple answer to the question uh, by Alvedi is not that everything's safe because we're 150 feet away, but that, oh, we determined what safe vibration limits were in our vibration monitoring plan, and then we monitored it and found out we were within our thresholds. That's not what he said. And I've shown this before. Apparently, their structural health monitoring system for the eastbound bridge still is not operational. That system, along with the way in motion system, they spent over $2.7 million. That was the initial purchase order anyway. And let's just look at these distances. You see the yellow dot. This is the span that was demoed last weekend. And it was 121 feet away at, at the end of that span. And then if you look at the other span that's already been demoed, that's right next to what was the westbound bridge, that's less than 100 feet away. And then finally, if you consider the fact that the bridge deck had to be demoed, that's only less than 20 feet away from the near side of the eastbound Washington Bridge. So the bridge deck's connected to the girders, the girders overlie the top of the pier, and the pier column transfers the load to the pile-supported foundation. And we can see that all those structures that they're demolishing, uh, lately anyway, with in terms of the bridge deck, the girders, and now these uh, fascia girders for the ramp to Gano Street, uh, are much closer to the eastbound bridge than uh, Director Alvedi has suggested. So why is this important? Well, we know that the eastbound bridge is rated to be in fair condition, and there were a number of deficiencies that have been noted as recently as the November 2024 inspection, and these kind of deficiencies show up for years and years, and inspection report after inspection report. So I submitted an APRA request to Rhode Island DOT and I asked them for a record of all maintenance and repair activity that had been performed for the eastbound Washington Bridge since construction in 2008. And this is the list that I got. And you can see, well, it's not just the list, it's the actual documents that I received. And they talk about some activities in 2021, deck sweeping, cleaning of scuppers and drains, and then same thing in 2024, they've cleaned the bridge deck, they've done deck repair in 2024, more scupper cleaning. But uh, you know, my request was for all maintenance and repair records for this bridge, and these are relatively minor uh, maintenance activities, maintenance and repair activities. So let's uh, look at what Director Alvedi said at a press conference in mid-January with uh, the governor of Rhode Island. We asked our maintenance division to compile a list of the deficiencies that show up in the April and the November reports and to put a plan in place to correct them. We, so far, they've done uh, many of the items in these reports. They've cleaned scuppers and drains. They've tightened bolts and nuts where called for. They've uh, cleaned the expansion joints. They've done some deck rehab work. <coughs> and many other items. 
Some of the work is currently underway. Repair of unused temporary barrier holes in the deck, uh, concrete deck repair, among other things that they're currently working on, and most if not all of the other deficiencies such as deck sealing uh, to uh, seal hairline fractures in concrete deck repair of spalls, uh, replacing glands in some of the modular expansion joints, and replacing missing stones on the footing will be addressed uh, during this next several months. Well, you heard what he said there about bolt tightening. And in the records that I received, it looked to be complete in terms of fulfilling the request. There was no note that said, hey, we're, we're going to withhold this or we consider this privileged. There was none of that. They redacted uh, certain sections uh, for personnel information, and they would make a note of what was redacted. So there was no indication that they redacted anything related to these other maintenance and repair activities. So to me, uh, the two takeaways, again, based on the fulfillment of the APRA request, and Rhode Island DOT has been uh, really good in general about fulfilling these requests uh, faithfully and in and and complete manner. And if they don't want to give it to me or can't, they, they tell me so. So the takeaways are there's been very little maintenance and repair work apparently done for the eastbound Washington Bridge since 2008. The other thing is clear that this bolt tightening uh, hasn't happened, at least per the documents that I received. So if you pull it all together, it's possible that there may not be sufficient attention and care being given to the potential impacts to the eastbound Washington Bridge. Keep in mind, they're gonna knock these pier columns out at some point and cut the tops of the piles off for the foundation a few feet below mud line. All that activity is going to occur within 50 feet of the near side of the eastbound Washington Bridge. And the eastbound Washington Bridge is founded on piling and the pier cap and pile were installed in 1930, so quite old. And as we know from RIDOT's justification for this structural health monitoring system that apparently is still not yet operational, they consider the eastbound bridge to be quote unquote a sensitive structure. So I'll stay on this story. I want to send a shout out to those of you who provided buy me a coffee donations. It really helps me support this channel's production costs as well as other incidentals that uh, have been creeping up quite a bit here lately. I also want to thank those of you who are channel members and also those of you who provided super thanks. That's another great way to support the channel. So I have many more updates planned based on APRA requests and other uh, insider information that I'm receiving from locals there in Rhode Island. So stay tuned for those future updates. Thanks very much, everyone.